Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nun Costa and today I'll be uh, presenting my generative music assignment for the interactive music curricular unit, uh, which basically consists of leveraging higher order Markov chains to generate uh, pieces of music. So as an overview what of, of what I'll be um, showing you uh, today, uh, firstly I'll give some context on this assignment, then I'll uh, talk a bit about uh, what are Markov chains and how they can actually be used to generate music. Then I'll showcase my uh, the tool that I developed um, using the, the Markov chains principle and um, the results that I obtained using uh, this tool. Um, so what is actually uh, music generation? Uh, music generation is the process of creating music without uh, direct input uh, from a human compu composer uh, using d different algorithms or uh, artificial intelligence. Um, this uh, generation can uh, be a genuine uh, composition, so we could actually be making original work um, through a variety of, um, of processes and algorithms, or we could be tackling a style imitation, which basically um, tackles uh, using uh, data from uh, an already existing composer such as Bach or Mozart and trying to imitate its style uh, and uh, some of its uh, characteristics in uh, in the, its uh, comp composed music. And that's what I'll be um, tackling today uh, using a stochastic process uh, that uh, leverages uh, Markov chains. So what are Markov chains? Uh, Markov chains is, uh, is a, ma a mathematical model uh, that represents a system that undergoes transitions from one state to another over a given period of time. On the right here you have an example of um, a Markov chain with uh, two states and the transitions in between states and uh, the state itself uh, are the probabilities of that transition occurring. And uh, an important m property of a Markov chain, uh, also known as the Markov property or memorylessness, memory assures that the probability of transitioning from one state to another depends solely on the current state. So how can we use this principle to um, uh, generate music? Uh, an easy way to apply this uh, this principle is to consider each state uh, as a pitch. So, um, for example, on the right we have the same system that I've sh that I've shown before, but uh, the two states are two different uh, pitches. Uh, the transitions in between pitches are still a uh, given probability, uh, but now they mean something different. Uh, it means that um, they mean that uh, they tend to show how likely it is uh, for a note to follow another. And how can we actually generate music from this? Um, given um, a randomly chosen uh, initial state, we can traverse this generated Markov chain and decide, uh, according to the probabilities of the transitioning states, uh, which transition to take and basically decide what's the next pitch to choose from. And thus we can gener generate easily um, a melody from uh, this Markov chain system. Um, an interesting extension of uh, um, mark the traditional Markov chains is an order K Markov uh, chain. So this extension basically um, lets go a bit of the concept of mer memorylessness, and uh, instead it uh, states that it, uh, each state will hold memory of up to K previous states. Uh, why is this important? Um, this types of this type of model will allow us to um, capture longer term dependencies in the data. So instead of uh, just knowing what's the next the next note um, given the state that I'm currently on, we can actually assert what's the next state given uh, some uh, previous notes, so a melodic, key pro m m melodic progression, to actually uh, predict the next one. Um, this will provide better continuity in our uh, temporal um, data generation, basically, which is uh, music generation in this case, uh, at the cost of an exponential growth of transitions as k increases. So, um, about the, the tool that I ended up developing for this assignment, uh, it uses uh, higher order Markov chains uh, to actually generate a fixed length uh, stream of notes. And now, can we, uh, how did I uh, do um, this process. Firstly, I uh, gathered uh, an, a data set, uh, which is basically the orchestra data set, uh, containing uh, piano pieces of well-known composers such, such as Bach, Mozart and Debussy. Debussy. 
Um, then I'll de I did decompose uh, the MIDI files of all uh, the piano pieces in this um, data set into segments of notes. So instead of just basically uh, streamlining all uh, notes in the MIDI files, I grouped um, the notes uh, that did overlap with one another to actually maintain the rhythm of uh, the original composer. Uh, since um, this Markov chain uh, that I built uh, only um, translates uh, easily the um, melodic uh, progression of a, of a song, I um, used segments of notes to uh, maintain some sort of rhythm on that um, generated uh, product. After decomposing these segments, uh, these notes into segments of, no of non-overlapping groups of notes, I analyzed uh, bundle, these bundled notes to generate all possible states and transitions. Uh, so given um, up to k previous notes on a bundled uh, um, notes uh, group, I decided what's the most likely um, next uh, group of notes or bundle of notes um, to uh, actually um, generate a cohesive and uh, con music progression that actually does have some sort of continuity and of course uh, to actually select uh, the next one um, what's the next uh, group of notes to follow one uh, bundle of notes um, I actually divided the whole uh, bundle of notes into groups of uh, K um, bundles so for example if K would equal 5 uh, I divided the uh, bundles of notes into groups of 5 sequentially um, and the fifth uh, group of notes would be uh, preceded by the uh, previous four, so we could assert uh, what what's the next note in a given range. As to actually generate the music itself, uh, firstly we would only need to get a random note from the uh, the uh, random note bundle from the um, whole list of uh, note bundles, note bundles. Um, and then given the k previous speeches in the previous bundles, uh, we would select the next bundle to, um, to the, and add it to the um, generated chain. So basically leveraging the, the Markov chain that we generated previously, we would then traverse this chain um, for how, how long we, we may decide uh, to generate um, a chain of bundled notes that then would be exported uses, using this pretty MIDI library um, and by selecting a given instrument available in this library we would export the generated sequence of notes into a MIDI file. So here in the code itself uh, we can actually see the whole process. Firstly I did import uh, some of the packages uh, that we needed for um, this um, this project to be made. For, m most importantly, this uh, pretty MIDI uh, package, um, which is useful for parsing uh, MIDI files. And here we basically parse the um, MIDI files from all the orchestra um, data set. Uh, we get the first instrument, which in this case will be piano, and, uh, and create uh, bundles of notes according to the um, the non-overlapping uh, sets of notes. Um, after this, we basically take all these notes that we generated for each of the MIDI files and create a note bu uh, notes bundle, uh, which basically uh, gra uh, grasps together a group of notes um, that we generated here previously and gives some other um, important meaning to that bundle, such as the beginning of the bundle and the ending of the bundle, which will be useful later on. And then we flatten the notes so that the the um, different MIDI files, um, instead of each each one of them being a list of uh, notes, uh, we flatten it to um, represent only a big list of notes uh, that can uh, represent a, a given artist. And um, to actually produce the um, the mark of chain itself, what we ended up doing um, is basically uh, iterating over um, pairs of n of k um, k bundle of notes. In this case, we have k equals one, so we would only have memory of the previous uh, note. Uh, or previous note bundle, and we basically get the f 
a k previous nodes and generate um, what are the possible uh, nodes for uh, the model to predict um, after um, knowing that the current node is that uh, node that we have. Um, lastly, uh, to actually generate this complete chain, so basically to generate the, um, the music from the Markov chain that we generated, what we do is to um, basically get all the possible keys, so if we have five, uh, for example, k equals five, if we have five uh, possible uh, previous nodes, we generate a list of um, the possible combinations, so basically the previous five, the previous four, the previous three, the previous two, and the previous node, and we assign them um, a given array of probabilities, so the higher um, the, the node sequence, uh, the higher the probability of it uh, being the next one chosen. And uh, if we actually um, get a probability on a given random number of uh, greater than 0 0.5, uh, we end up selecting uh, one of the possible keys uh, from that uh, distribution and selecting a random node in the uh, random notes uh, list uh, to, to, to be our next node. If not, what we ended up doing is to select the next node, so basically the in the original MIDI file the next note uh, which follows the note that we uh, currently played. At the end we basically assign this complete chain to uh, the given artist and we can uh, export it uh, like this, so basically a list of note bundles. To actually output this we use pretty MIDI uh, which basically iterates through all the note chains and uh, creates a MIDI MIDI note uh, with a given velocity pitch and start and end um, using this offset which basically n tells us uh, how long um, how long it has been since the beginning of the note generation and then we basically only need to uh, extract this uh, export this file into um, our current directory. We can also select the instrument that we chose. Here we selected orchestral uh, ARP, and um, all the files that we generated will go into the results um, folder. As to showcase the results that I ended up obtaining for uh, this project, uh, here we have uh, basically a matrix of results that we ca that you can see later on on the. Um, submitted MIDI, MIDI files, um, but basically we can uh, actually uh, hear uh, the difference between a traditional Markov chain Bach uh, and a higher order Markov chain uh, with Bach to actually see the difference uh, between the two different approaches on a singular um, composer. with an higher order Markov chain. So to conclude uh, this uh, project, we can uh, assert that, as expected, the higher order Markov chains do provide music with better continuity if, and feel slightly more natural when compared with traditional Markov chains. Uh, either way, all generated music is indeed satisfactory, although it does sound fabricated uh, after listening, it, listening to it for a while, uh, since the cadence uh, of the music itself is a bit off. Uh, we could tackle this problem by uh, adjusting the, um, the velocity of the notes according to the previous note, etc., etc. Um, another thing that we uh, did notice is that it does become a little bit repetitive uh, after a while when we just stick to one artist, for example in the Bach sample, uh, mostly due to a small sample of music to generate from. Um, however, uh, we can pretty much conclude that Markov chains are uh, an intuitive and interesting approach uh, to automatic music generation and they do provide um, 
quite quite satisfactory results. Uh, so thank you. Uh, this was my assignment for uh, generative music. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.